Yeah, thank you. We welcome all of us once again. Allow me to pray and then we, we begin. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We glorify your name for your goodness. Once again, we humble ourselves at the throne of grace. We really ask for your mercies and grace to hold us to this meeting. We really desire to know what you desire for us, Lord. And we pray, Lord, that uh, the enemy will not hinder this cause and will allow us to learn the truth as it, it is in your word and be able to be drawn closer to you. My prayer by faith in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Yeah, we we are we we are continuing, and uh, we were reading the book of. We are actually going through the Bible, seeing the work that uh, God has laid to us, and that is proclaiming the three angels' messages, the bread of life for this time, and. Uh, we, we actually realize that God in Nainemar and not go back there at 292, we are told that this message is an universal message that uh, even children and youths need to be well acquainted with it to be able to uh, take it to the world. And we say that in the series that we'll be running, we'll be able to see how by our experience, by our lives, by uh, going out as missionaries, we'll be able to proclaim uh, these messages. And so we have uh, various uh, topics to handle on the same. And so the youths need to understand this. And uh, today we want to tackle uh, the calling of the youths. Uh, God has really given us a sacred message and God is also forming a movement uh, that will take this final message, the, this present truth, this bread of life for this time, to the whole world. And we've seen that uh, the youths will form part of this final movement, and the children as well are not left out. And so we are going to see an experience in the book of Kings as we, uh, as you look at the screen. Uh, we are going to see the experience in the book of uh, in the book of uh, Kings, actually, twenty two, from verses one. We are told of a story of a man uh, known as Josiah. The Bible reads: Josiah was eight years old when he began to reign, and he reigned thirty and one years in Jerusalem, and his mother's name was Jedida the daughter of Adair of Baskat. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. So here comes a king uh, in at the age of eight years. And the Bible records that this man uh, did that which was right in the sight of God. And it came to pass in the 18th year of King Josiah, I believe now we, we, we are brought when he's a child, we are told again when he's a youth, in the 18th year of King Josiah, that the king sent Saphan, the son of Azaliah, the son of Meshalam, the scribe, to the house of the Lord, saying, go up to Hilkiah, the high priest, that he may sum the silver which is brought unto the house of the Lord, which keepers of the door have gathered of the people. And them delivered in the hand of the doers of the work that have, have the oversight of the house of the Lord. And let them give it to the doers of the work, which is in the house of the Lord, to repair the breaches of the house. Yeah, so uh, this man, uh, Josiah, the house of the Lord has been destroyed and is to repair the breaches. Uh, of the house because we are told before that he, he he was he walked upright in the sight of the Lord and so we see he's bringing about reformation he's bringing about reformation in the house of the Lord uh is restoring the waste places uh the things that had been destroyed by the enemy and uh 
we'll consider history a little bit as uh, with the youths and those who are following uh, about the beginning of the movement that uh, is going to finish the work, and that is the formation of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. We believe that uh, in the century of uh, in 1888, in 1844, when God was beginning this movement, uh, majority were youths, and they were to repair the, to bring about reformations and to take uh, the three angels' message to the whole world, and then bring to the end, uh, bring bring the world to the end by this message, which is to be proclaimed to the whole world. And so we are told that largely of those who formed the movement were youths and teenagers, uh, people like uh, Andrews. They 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 joined the movement at a teenager, at a teenager age, at a teen uh, when they were teens, and uh, God used them mightily to be able to finish or to restore or to bring back that which was lost, to restore the truths, to find out the truths and uh, and be able to finish the work of God. And uh, as we move on, we see uh, things happened, things ne uh, never happened right. And the truths that stood for us as Seventh-day Adventists were trodden underfoot and God wants to raise a people again. And among these people, God wants to raise uh, the dear youths who, as Josiah, will be willing to restore the uh, the waste places, to repair the breaches of the house. And then we see how he did the work. In verses 6, we are told, uh, unto carpenters and builders and mason and to buy timber and hewn stone to repair the house. In, the, in our series, we'll be able to see how the youths uh, who are going to be rightly trained are going to be able to build up uh, the body of Christ uh, and uh, be able to bring this work to an end. Uh, we continue uh, to read, and uh, there's something very interesting to note about this man. Verses 8, uh, the, And the Helkia the high priest said unto Shaphan the scribe, Yeah, so we continue. Uh, we, had, we we see how this young man, uh, a youth, Josiah, bringing about reformation, repairing the old waste places. And uh, that is the work that God is really calling us. As we consider it with the, with the writing in Manuscript Release, Volume 9, that says that the, the message for this time, the three angels' message, is to be taken to the world and the children, even the youth, should be able to be acquainted, should be able to understand so that the life that they will be living, uh, the influence that they will be exerting will be uh, uh, really making the three angels' message to come uh, or bringing up to the end of the three angels' message, which is to finish the work and so we see an example of a, a young man here uh, which actually tells us that we are not limited as children and young men we are required to be able to be uh, to finish the work of reformation which was started also by youths as we will see in the 16th century those who actually arouse the uh, this thing and so we are told that uh, the servants of Jesus are to be bear the precious truth to the world and to present the claims of God to every soul, not, uh, not pandering to custom or lessening the responsibility of any soul. So we are not to be lessened. Uh, we should not lessen our responsibility, but we are required, every servant of Jesus Christ, he, the children, even the youth, they are required to bear this precious truth to the world.
We know that there are many present truth in the world. There are many precious truth in the word of God, but the present truth is what the world needs now. And so that is the three angels message, the three angels message. Uh, we are told when the book of the law was found in the house of the Lord in the time of ancient Israel, it was read before Josiah. So we see what brings about uh, this man uh, being acquainted with the word of God. That brought about the reformation, which was that when he, the book of the law was brought and he read, he read it and he rent his garments and bade the men in holy office to inquire of the Lord for him and for his people. For they had departed from the status of the Lord. He called together all the men of Israel. So we see in the world that you are living today, actually, he, it is said it is the darkest period of the world history. Men are lawless, uh, men are we evil, there are a lot of wickedness, but amid it such, there are those who God want to raise and are uh, uh, children and youth that will be able to uh, form a standard of be against these evil things uh, that are in the world today and their, their, their experience, their life, will be a testimony that they can be found faithful even as God found faithful men when the world was destroyed back then uh, as uh, Noah and his family. And so he says, the sin of the rulers and the people was pointed out and the king stood up before them and confessed his transgression. He manifested his uh, repentance and made a covenant to keep the statutes of the Lord with his whole heart. So he made a covenant to keep the statutes of the Lord with his whole heart. Let's not forget that we are speaking about a young man, uh, a youth, a child, beginning his reign at the age of eight. The network. Yeah, the net. We are sorry for the network. Uh, yeah, so we are seeing the story of a man, uh, this Josiah, who brings reformation and repairs the breach. And you are told that that is the work that we need to do today. And we've seen that the children out for this work. When Josiah warning and condemnation because is because Israel had trampled upon the precepts of the heaven he humbled himself I'm being told my network is not stable okay uh, uh, he humbled himself he went before the Lord he made a thorough work of repentance and reformation and God accepts his efforts uh, let me see the example or the the example of the Waldenses that is in the 16th century Reformation. The, the, the thought that we are building here is that uh, youths and children uh, as seen in the history and, and as seen in the Bible, in the spirit of prophecy, uh, shows that they are not left out for this work that uh, is before us to finish the work of God. Called to uh, their calling is to be able to be part of this group of God. And the experiences, the the series that we have will be able to show us how we are going to be part of that movement. The persecution visited for many centuries upon these God-fearing people were injured by them with the patient and uh, Contency that honored their redeemer, notwithstanding the crusades against them. So we see the Waldenses, uh, that is reformation in the early uh, in the early years, that is in the 16th century. Uh, there were crusades against them, and in human uh, vulture uh, to which they were subjected, they continue to send out their missionary to scatter the precious truth. Who are these missionaries? They hunted. They were hunted to death, yet their blood watered the seed sown, and it failed not of yielding fruit. Thus, the Waldenses witnessed for God centuries before the birth of Luther. 
have uh, scattered over many lands. They planted the seeds of reformation that began in the time of Wycliffe, grew abroad and deep in the days of Luther, and uh, and is to be carried forward to the close of time. So we see that the work that the Waldenses did is to be carried forward to the close of time by those who are willing to suffer all things for the word of God, for the testimony of Jesus. So the Waldenses gave themselves and they went as missionaries to take the word of, the word of God. Listen to this. Uh, the contrast between the disciples of the gospel and the upholders of popish superstition was no less manifested in the rank of the scholars than among the common people. Opposed to the old defenders of hierarchy, who had neglected the acquirement of languages and the cultivation of literature, were generous-minded youths. Most of them devoted to study the investigation of the scriptures. So you see most of the Waldenses were, uh, the, 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 the group were largely uh, with youths, who are generous minded. Uh, they devoted their time to studying the word of God. Just as uh, Josiah, we saw the example in the Bible that when the book of the law was brought before him, so we see with the Waldenses, they committed themselves, they devoted their time to the study and they investigated the scriptures and acquired with the literary, uh, literary treasures of uh, antiquity, gifted with the quickness of apprehension. Actually, the book Steps to Christ tells us that the truths necessary for our salvation are as clear as noonday. Even the children can be able to understand. So they were understanding the truths very quickly, unlike the learned men. And we are told, gifted with the quickness of apprehension, elevation of soul, and intrepidity of heart, these youths soon attained such proficiency that uh, that none could complete, compete with them. So we see how uh, God really worked by these youths that uh, they were not to compete with any other people, even those who were so-called the learned of those days. And so this is, we are told, if you remember up there, that this work will continue. And it is to be carried forward to the close of time. And actually, we are living in the close of time. And uh, God requires youths who will give themselves diligently uh, to the study of the word of God and will be as these men who will finish his work, who will understand their calling and finish their work. So that on a public occasion on which these youthful defenders of the Reformation encountered the Romish Doctors, those who have went to big theologian schools, they were met by defenders of reformation and they were youths. Very interesting. The assaults were carried on with ease and confidence that embarrassed the dullness of their adversary and exposed them before all diverse contempt. Wow. I pray that our youths of today who will be defenders of truth. Uh, when the people will view them, will be like, where did they learn? Uh, yet they've not went to our schools. The reform, the reformation did not, uh, as many suppose, end with Luther. It is to be carried to the close of the world history. Luther had a great work to to uh, to do in reflecting the others, the light which God has permitted to shine upon him. Yet he did not receive all the light which was to be given to the world. From that time, this new light has been continually shining upon scriptures and new truths have been constantly unfolding. We are told the example of Christ and we will really dwell upon the example of Christ in many other lines in preparing youths to finish the work of God. Christ was a protestant. He protested against the formal worship of the Jewish nation right from his childhood. And we'll consider that right from his age, uh, his youthful age, he resisted uh, the formal worship of the Jewish nation who rejected the counsel of God against themselves. So to him, the counsels of God were, uh, were, were given 
or very paramount. And so it is also, it is so with the youths for this time who are going to stand uh, for the Lord, they will be against any formal worship. They will work by principle as they will be led by God. Uh -huh. He told them that they taught for doctrines the commandment of men and they were pretenders and hypocrites. Like Quita Sepulcher, they were beautiful without but within full of impurity and corruption. The reformer date back to Christ and the apostles. They came out and separated themselves from religion, uh, a religion of forms and ceremonies. Luther and his followers did not invent the reformed region, religion. They simply accepted it as presented by Christ and the apostle. The Bible is presented to us as sufficient guide, but the, uh, yeah, the Bible is given us as sufficient guide to lead us uh, in the finishing of the work of God. The reformation, which did not begin as many suppose by Luther, but it began by Jesus Christ himself going against the formal worship and religion of those times. And God is looking for youths who will consecrate themselves, who will understand their calling and be able to uh, enlist in the cause of God and uh, finish the work of God. There are many Christians youth. This is mis uh, Messages to Young People 197, paragraph 1. There are many Christian youth that can do a good work if they will learn lessons in the school of Christ. So one of the greatest thing is to learn in the school of Christ. But my interesting point here is that uh, there are many Christian youth that can do a good work. And then even though pastors, evangelists, and teachers should neglect the seeking of the lost, let not the children and the youth neglect to be doers of the word. Amen. So one of the ways uh, that the three angels' message are going to is going to be shared forth is by children and youths being doers of the word, living by the word of God. Their lives will stand as testimony and will be revealing uh, the character of God to the world and be able to uh, stand as a test for the cry for the coming of Christ, which which is at hand. As the faithful tell one, standard bearers are offering up their lives for the truth's sake, who will come forward to take this place? The question in, uh, is asked, as faithful men, men who are leading, as they uh, uh, as they come down, uh, who will come forward to take this place? And then we are asked, will our young men accept the holy trust at, at the hands of their fathers? We have men in the movement that are doing great work, but are young men willing to take up uh, a trust in their hands? Are they preparing to fill the vacancies made by death of the faithful? Will the apostles shall be heeded the call to duty be heard amidst the incidents to selfishness and ambition that allure the youth? So there is selfishness, there is ambition, and will we sacrifice this to enlist in the cause of God, to take up the places that the standard bears, men who had stood for the truth until death, to occupy their space? We have an army of youth today who can do much if they are properly directed and, and encouraged. We want our children to believe the truth. We want them to be blessed of God. We want them to act a part in well-organized plans for helping other youths. Yes, yeah, so this is the work of the standard bearers, those who have stood for the truth. Uh, it is the work to, and it even parents, this is their duty to be able to educate, uh, to lead the dear youths to uh, take their places when they will, uh, when they will uh, get off from the work, either by death or when they are tired. They need to rest. That's why the Bible says that I write unto you, youths, because you have strength. As the elderly uh, strength goes, the youths are required to be able to come out as Josiah to restore the old ways places, to bring 
reformation to an end by them first practicing the truth in their life, being doers of the word. You are to be men who will walk humbly with God, who will stand before him in your God-given manhood, free from impurity, free from all contamination, from the sensuality that is corrupting this age. You must be men who will despise all falsity and wickedness, who will dare to be true and brave, holding aloft the bloodstained banner of Prince Emmanuel. Your talents will increase as you use them for the master. And they will be esteemed precious by him who has bought them with an infinite price. Do not sit down and neglect to do anything simply because you cannot do something great, but do whatever your hands find to do with thoroughness and energy. So there's a work for dear children. And that is why we'll handle home missionary. Uh, we'll be able to take care of the responsibility of the youth being burden bearers uh, right from the homes. And in the manner that we, they will be conducting themselves in the homes, we'll be able to preach the three angels message and uh, bring uh, the world to an end because that is the message that brings everything to an end. Christ is calling for, yeah, call to enlist. The calling of the youth, they are called to enlist in the cause of God. You are told Christ calling for volunteers to enlist under his standard and bear the banner of the cross before the world. The church is languishing for the help of young men who will bear a courageous testimony, who will, with their ardent zeal, stir up the sluggish energy of God's people. So we are living a time where actually the last church we told the laudation, we are in the laudation state where uh, men are comfortable with being lukewarm and God is looking for youths who will be firm, uh, who will be zealous to stir up the sluggishness, the sluggish energies of God's people and so increase the power of the church in the world. Young men are wanted who will resist the tide of worldliness and lift a voice of warning against taking the first steps in immorality and vice. So when the world is full of this evil, when we are living in the darkest uh, period of the world history, young men are wanted who will resist all this tide of worldliness and all these evil things and enlist in the cause of God and be able to finish the work of God. But first, the young men who have will serve God and give themselves to his work must cleanse the soul temple of its impurities and enthrone Christ in the heart. Then they will be enabled to put energy into their Christian effort and will manifest enthusiastic zeal in persuading men to be reconciled to Christ. We note our young men respond to the invitation of Christ. Answer, here I am, send me. I'm looking forward for those youths who are willing to enlist in the cause of God. Those who will say that here we've understood our calling. We've understood what God requires of us in these days. And here we are, Lord, use us. That is what God is looking forward to have. Uh, great men, as those who will be able to stand against the evil and uh, the bad things in the world. Men, uh -huh. here I am saying me, young men press uh, to the front and identify yourself as laborers together with Christ. So the Lord is really interested in the youth. He's really interested in the young men. Why? Because they have strength. They, they can go with zeal and be able to go against the odds of this world and their life stands as a testimony. And uh, yeah, so it says young men press to the front and identify yourself as laborers together with Christ. No, a, a number of times when we consider laborers together with the Christ, then we think we it's about having pulpits and having to going from mission to mission, but I'll be able to show us that being laborers together with Christ is some is a 
really something huge that if we understand, we'll understand that every one of us, even children, has a responsibility to do. We'll, under, we'll be able to see how even uh, being faithful to the home duties and being burden bearers uh, in the home and in the society is being uh, being a co-laborers with Christ, uh, taking up the work where he left it to carry it on its completion. Uh, with such an army of workers as a youth, rightly trained, mightily furnished, so they, we are to be rightly trained, we are to receive, we are to be furnished, then we are told how soon the message of a crucified, risen, and soon coming Savior uh, might be carried to the whole world. How soon might the end come, the end of suffering and sorrow and sin? How soon, in place of possession here, will it blight of sin and pain? Our children might receive their inheritance where righteousness shall inherit the land and dwell there and forever, where the inheritance shall say, I am I shall not say I am sick, and the voice of the weeping shall shall be no more heard. So when youths who are willing to enlist, so number one, there is a call to enlist, uh, there is a call to enlist in the cause of God. The church is languishing for want of workers, youths who will uh, be able to stir up the sluggishness in the church, who will be able to bring uh, uh, to restore the old waste places, uh, to make firm the truths that are stood as the fundamental principles for our faith. Uh, by them living the truth uh, in their life, having the experience of the truth and uh, be able to share the truth with others. That is my burden for uh, the youths to be able to understand uh, their calling and uh, be able to have a, a willing heart to be part of this final movement, uh, having a final message in a final time. Let me consider something in the book of Genesis as we close. Let me consider something in the book of Genesis. The book of Genesis chapter 6. The book of Genesis chapter 6. Okay, I'll read it from my Bible. Uh, this was the, the issue back then. And uh, men were found who were faithful. Quoted it, but let me read it in a, in a while as we contemplate upon enlisting in the cost of God, sacrificing uh, the, the, the things that entice many youths in these last days. Sacrificing the things that entice many youths in these last days and being able to uh, be part of this final movement, having the final message, that is the three angels message, to take to the old world by our experience, by us living the truth, by taking to others through various means. Uh, this is the history of the world uh, when it was coming to an end in the time of Noah. So we are told in verses 6, chapter 8, and Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just, uh, that is 6, verses 9. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generation. And Noah walked with God. Amen. So we are told that Noah found grace in the house of, in the eyes of the Lord, and Noah walked with God. When was this time that Noah was walking with God? It was at the in the darkest hour of this world history that Noah was found faithful. God counted to him righteousness because he walked with God. 
And together with these sons, which I want to believe perhaps they were they were youths, they were they were found faithful and this generation. Verses seven says, and the Lord said, chapter seven, verses one, and the Lord said unto Noah, Come thou and all thy house into the ark, for thee have I seen rushes before me in this generation. So um uh, amongst the wicked and crooked generation, a man was found faithful. In these last days, will our dear youths understand their calling and be found faithful and listening in the coast of God, living the truth and uh, 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 allowing the truth to have its influence in their life. That is our message for today. And uh, tomorrow we will see the second part uh, that is also we've seen in the experience of Josiah when the book of the law was brought before him. And so tomorrow we'll handle uh, the safeguard for the youths, those who are willing to enlist, those who are understanding their calling, their safeguard. Uh, yeah, so may God bless you. Uh, shall we pray? Uh, Father in heaven, we thank you. We glorify your name for your goodness. We've seen in the history how you raised youths who are faithful to you right from the book of Genesis. Looking at the history in the 16th century, you raised youths who went against the odds, against the formal, the formal worship of those days allowing Christ also to come and live here on earth as a youth to be our perfect example of the work that you desire the youth to enlist themselves in. We pray that uh, you will continue leading us in this week as we go through this series. And we pray that uh, those whom you desire to be blessed with these messages of mercy, messages that are uh, perhaps uh, had long been buried in the in the put in the pit we pray lord that uh, you will be able to work according to your will bless those who have make sure that this meeting uh, come to a success even though it has been having challenges and uh, help us lord to be able to improve that uh, tomorrow things works good. We pray that your blessings be with our children as we end this meeting. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.